Enough about the parts of the stereo microscope, now let's learn how to use one. The learning objective of this section is to adjust, use, and maintain a stereo microscope. First, remove the microscope from its storage location. When not in use, any microscope should be protected from dust, usually with a plastic dust cover. Always carry a microscope with two hands. One hand should support the base and one hand should steady it by its vertical arm or column. A microscope is heavy and needs a solid table to support its weight. A solid support will also reduce vibration. Vibration reduces image clarity. If you are going to use a microscope for a long period of time, Use a chair that allows you to comfortably look into the ocular lenses and easily adjust the microscope and object. Check that the outside surfaces of the ocular and objective lenses are clean. That is, that they are free of dust and oil. Eyelashes and eyebrows often transfer skin oils and eye makeup into the ocular lenses. Such materials should be cleaned off with a lens cleaning solution and lens paper. The cleaning solution consists of water, alcohol and detergent. Lens papers are made of fine fibers that do not produce lint. Never use facial or other tissues on a microscope lens as they may scratch the glass or remove the special lens coatings. Objective lenses seldom need cleaning unless you touch the lenses with your fingers. You should not remove any lens from its housing for cleaning the internal surfaces. Leave that for an expert. Now we will use the microscope to view an object. To start with, Use a flat piece of newspaper or a series of printed A's or E's as an object. Plug in the light source. Adjust the microscope lamp so that the object is illuminated evenly. Move the objective lens with the lowest magnification into position. The lowest objective lens is labeled with the lowest number, in this case 6.4. Look into the objective lenses and move your head up and down until you see the largest image. If you use eyeglasses, you may choose to wear them or remove them. To make the interpupillary adjustment, move the ocular tubes together or apart so that you can see only one circle of light, not two circles. To make the diopter adjustment, first determine which one of the two ocular lenses is adjustable. Usually, this is easily detected by the presence of a grooved or knurled collar. First, close or cover your eye on the side of the adjustable tube and using your open eye and the focusing knob, bring the image into focus. Then, close or cover the eye on the non-adjustable side and open your other eye. Use the knurled knob on the adjustable ocular tube to focus the image. Open both eyes to see the object in complete focus. The image that you see through a stereo microscope is upright or erect. A pair of prisms in the body of the microscope does this. When you move the object to your left, the image moves to the left. When you move the object up, the image also moves up. Such properties make a stereo microscope ideal for dissecting purposes. In fact, many people call such microscopes dissecting microscopes. Move the next higher objective lens into position. Note that with increased magnification, the area of the object that you see is decreased. What you can see in the circle of light of a microscope is called the field of view. The size of the field of view decreases with increased magnification. The learning objective of this section was to set up, adjust, and use a stereo microscope. This included cleaning the external surfaces of ocular and objective lenses, adjusting the light, adjusting interpupillary distance, setting diopter adjustment, and focusing. Be sure to clean your ocular lenses and replace the dust cover before storing your microscope. The major disadvantage of stereo microscopes is that they are normally limited to magnifications of about 50 times. For higher magnifications, you have to use a compound microscope.